I want to make cannelloni again today because I haven't made cannelloni in a long time and I love cannelloni. I do have on my website and on YouTube a recipe and a video for cannelloni florentine for which I use a red sauce, a tomato based sauce. But last time, the last video I did when I was making Alfredo sauce, I mentioned about bechamel slash balsamella sauce. And I thought I need to do an Italian recipe like cannelloni that uses a bechamel sauce or balsamella. It's balsamella in Italian rather than a red sauce. So that's what I want to do today. I'm taking it from, I'm modifying it from Giuliano, Bugi, if I can pronounce this correctly, Bugiali, his book, uh, The Fine Art of Italian Cooking. I like his book. This is him. I like him because his recipes work. But he's also kind of funny because he goes to great lengths, or at least he did. This book was published like 30, 40 years ago, and he's not a teenager here, so he may no longer be among us. But he goes to great lengths to try to prove that the French stole their recipes from the Italians and then called it French cuisine. <laughs> I don't think he likes the French. So anyways, that's what I want to make today. I want to make this spinach and ricotta cannelloni. First thing I need to do is make the pasta. I've got a large egg here that I'm going to break into a bowl. I know that the Italian way of making pasta is they put the flour on a, the counter, make a well in the middle, break the egg into it, and then start mixing it together. I've been doing it this way for 40 years. I have yet to see a failure. I don't think it's going to fail this time. Put a pinch of salt in there, but not a big pinch. And then I'm going to mix this up. When you make fresh pasta, you put the salt in the pasta dough because it's going to cook in like less than a minute. In this case, because I'm only going to cook it partially. So it doesn't have time to absorb salted water like dry pasta does. And therefore, the only way to get salt into it is to put it in first. I have here two different kinds of flour. This is all-purpose flour. This is a quarter cup, which is about one and a third ounces, 35 grams, and this is a quarter cup of durum wheat semolina pasta flour. It's a harder flour. One and a half ounces, roughly 43 grams. I'm going to work these in. I'm going to put it all in because I know it's not going to all go in. I'm going to need more. And then I'm going to put some olive oil in there. About a teaspoon of olive oil. And then I don't want to use my whisk. I'm going to blend it with a spatula. Because I'm adding the oil, I'm probably going to need to add more flour. I usually do. But I start with a quarter cup of each. See, that's not a good enough to make a pasta dough yet. That's typical. All right. I start with less flour because you never know how absorbent your flour is going to be or how large your eggs are going to be. If you're using relatively small eggs, they're going to absorb less flour. So here are my containers of flour. Now I can start putting extra flour in say a pinch at a time and start working this in until it's dry enough to knead. And that actually looks like it's starting right there, but it's still soft and sticky. So now I'm going to move this to my counter. And that is sticky. And now I can start working in more flour. And the idea is to get a dough that is smooth but stiff, not at all sticky. I'm going to get those out of the way now because what I'm seeing here is a pasta that's starting to be pretty dry, still a little bit sticky but not bad. And what I'm doing is I'm using the heel of my hand to 
you kind of smear this into the counter. So I'm forcing together the flowers and the eggs and the oil to get it all mixed up and smooth. And yes, that's a train going by. All right, I'm, I'm okay with that right now. There's my pasta dough. I'm gonna wrap this in plastic and set this aside because the longer that this sits, for two or three hours is good, the smoother it'll get. It'll make it go through the pasta machine more easily. It won't crack along the edges when I'm rolling it. I have here two boxes of spinach. They're 10 ounces each or about 284 grams each. If you're someone who does not like spinach, I'm with you. I don't like spinach either. But as an ingredient when cooking things, I think it's delicious. So I need to cook these down, wilt them basically. That'll be really easy. I've got a large skillet heating on the stove with maybe a quarter cup of water in it coming up to a boil. So I'm gonna start putting all of my spinach in there. And one box is going to fill this pan, but that's all right. I'll get both boxes eventually in there. I'm going to put a lid on that for maybe 30 seconds to a minute. That'll wilt down and I can put the second box in there. That has had a chance to wilt down a little bit. I'm going to put the rest of my spinach in there. <laughs> that pan is really full, but that's okay. As I said, it'll all fit. I've done this before. I'm going to cook this for a couple of minutes and then after two minutes or so I'm going to use tongs to turn it all over so I get it cooked thoroughly. I'm ready to turn this over now. I'm going to let that steam go out the other way so I don't fog my camera lens. You can see how much that's cooked down but before I turn it over this is one of my variations. I'm going to put in a couple of anchovy fillets. An Italian friend of mine years ago taught me to cook with anchovies. They don't necessarily stand out and announce themselves as anchovies, but they will blend into a dish and they add depth of flavor to a dish. And those will practically melt in there as my spinach continues cooking. It's almost done. That maybe needs one more, one more minute. Okay, my spinach now is done. Look at that. That's all nicely wilted down. I'm going to turn the heat off under that and I'm going to let that cool for 10 minutes or so because I have to squeeze the moisture out of that spinach. And you can see how those anchovies are already starting to break up. That's what I want. I'm ready to squeeze the moisture out of the spinach. I used to squeeze it by hand, using my hands, but a fan of the website and my YouTube channel told me this idea. If you've got a potato ricer, use that. And it works very well. I'm gonna put that over the pan because it's gonna drip a lot. Okay, and then put that in there and then just squeeze. Okay, next I can chop this up. The cookbook says to chop this really fine. I don't know that it's all that necessary to get it chopped really fine. But I'm going to chop this pretty well. I mean, it's so soft that it'll just kind of blend into the filling when I mix the filling. And I'm going to say that is good enough. I'm ready to start mixing my filling. I'm wearing a glove because I'm going to get my hands in there to mix it. So there's my spinach cooked and squeezed. This is 8 ounces or about 227 grams of ricotta cheese. And I have here one large egg, whole egg, plus one egg yolk from a large egg. 
roughly one half cup, 57 grams of freshly grated Parmesan or Parmigiano cheese crafted in Wisconsin. I looked for imported Italian, but they didn't have any. Okay, for seasoning, I'm going to grate some black pepper in there. Add maybe a pinch of salt. And then I have here my nutmeg grater. I'm going to just grate some nutmeg in there. Hopefully I won't tear my rubber glove. I've done that before doing this very thing. But I have more gloves. I'm going to put in about an eighth of a teaspoon maybe of freshly ground nutmeg. I'm just being so careful with this because I don't want to tear my gloves. I didn't tear my gloves. Okay. Now I'm ready to start mixing this up. All right, there is my filling. I'm going to cover this with plastic and I can set this aside until I'm ready to work with it. The next thing I need to make is the bechamel. So I've got a pan heating on the stove over medium heat. I'm putting in one and a half tablespoons, which is about 21 grams of whole butter. I'm going to get that melted. And then I have here two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. I don't usually do the gram weight because I think tablespoons are pretty common throughout, but that's about 18 grams. And then stirring this, I'm just going to cook this for about one minute just to cook the raw flavor out of that flour. Turn the heat off under this to let it cool down a little bit. And then I'm going to be putting in 240 milliliters, which is about one cup, or just the opposite, one cup, which is about 240 milliliters of milk. Bring the heat back up under this. And I'm going to stir, 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 stir to get that all mixed together. And I'm going to bring this to a boil. While I'm waiting for that to come to a boil, I'll add a little pinch of salt maybe a little bit more, a tiny amount of white pepper, just a little bit, a little pinch, like a sixteenth of a teaspoon. And then, because it's, I'm making a bechamel, I'm going to grind some, or grate, some fresh nutmeg in there. The original recipe doesn't call for putting nutmeg in this sauce. He just makes a regular white sauce, which is its not really a sauce. It's a, a mother sauce from which you make your more complex sauces. This is a bechamel. No, balsamella. So I'm going to bring this up to a boil that'll thicken and I'll cook this for as long as I need to. Could be six to eight minutes to get this as thick as I want. You can see how that just runs off the surface. I want it to have a coats the back of a spoon texture to it. So this now is just coming up to a boil. You can hear it bubbling. I turn my heat down to medium low. It's already pretty much there as far as the thickness. I never know what I'm going to run into as far as the formula. They're always a little bit different. Everybody's got their own idea how to make the perfect bechamel slash balsamella. But this is already nicely thickened. I'm turning the heat off under that. So it doesn't really need to be cooked anymore. But one thing I do want to do is taste it to make sure that I have enough salt in there. So out comes my infamous red handle tasting spoon. A little more salt. I can set that aside and then start assembling, or at least start preparing my pasta to make my cannelloni. So here's my pasta dill. This has had a chance to sit for a while. And what I'm hoping to do, I want to get this rolled so it's about the width of my rollers here, which is about six inches, and then cut it into six inch squares, roughly. I'm hoping I can get at least six pieces of 
cannelloni dough out of this piece. Okay, I'm just flattening this out so that it'll go through the machine a little more easily. My machine, the widest setting is number one. I'm going to roll to number five on this. The first three time, uh, the first few times through might not be the easiest, but once I get this where I want it, it'll go better. Okay. And that'll probably tear. No, just a little bit of tearing on the edge. I'm going to go to number three. And then come back to number one. And just work back and forth until I get this to where I want it. And pretty much it's already almost near my um, width that I want. So there is my piece of pasta dough. I should easily get what I want out of that one. I have here a fluted cutter. So I'm going across. It's going to give me a nice little decorated edge there. Just a little notched edge. And then let's see. I don't have to trim those long edges. So it'll be okay if they're lift, left a little rough. So there's one. Two, three, four. I'm going to run this through and see if I can stretch at least one more out of that piece. I have my large skillet on the stove, water coming to a boil. I'm going to cook these sheets a couple at a time because I have the room for it for about 30 seconds. I just want to partially cook these so that they're not too raw when I use them to roll my cannelloni. Returning now to my filling. Is this going to have enough salt in it? Do I want to taste this with raw egg in it? Probably not. So, I'm going to tear off a bit of my parchment paper Put a little spoon, not that much, on the parchment paper. And then I'm going to put this in the microwave oven for about 15, 20 seconds to cook it. Okay, this has come out of the microwave oven. And it'll probably be hot, but that's okay. I think it'll be safe to taste. Needs salt. So that's why I wanted to taste it. I'm going to put a pinch or so of salt in there, stir that in there. And now that should be okay. I can start filling my pasta sheets. Now, what I'm going to do is, he says when you roll them up, leave one seam on top. I don't like that idea. Because I'm gonna, I got a lot of filling here, so I think I'm gonna force a lot of filling in there. I also have a baking dish that I've coated liberally with butter, so I'm gonna put a piece of my pasta down, and then I need a cloth. This will do. I have some scraps of cloth there I use for towel maybe a little bit more right there okay as I roll this up remember that egg yolk I used in the filling I saved the egg white from that egg what I'm gonna do this is my idea my modification my adaptation is I'm gonna put some egg white to help seal it and I'm going to put it in the pan, in the dish, seam side down. I just think it'll be nicer that way. With a little bit of more pasta, I could have done six, because I have enough for a sixth one. But I'm going to save this, because I can mix it with some cooked pasta to have like a cheese sauce, cheese and 
spinach sauce. All right, there they are. There are my five cannelloni. I thinned my sauce down a little bit. It thickened as I expected it would as it sat. I'm going to cover these with a layer of sauce, but I'm going to save some of my bechamel for garnish afterwards. I'm going to cover this with a piece of foil and meanwhile I'm heating my oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit which is about 190 degrees Celsius. I'm going to bake this for 20 minutes. While the cannelloni is in the oven, I thought I would take a minute just to talk about some variations you might consider because this is kind of, to me, this is like a starting point. You could add to this, well, maybe cut the spinach in half, use half the spinach and add some diced chicken breast. Or you could add some diced, some finely chopped prosciutto and maybe um, fry up some pancetta till it's crisp and then dice that up and put that in there. I want to do this again. I'm going to do a different recipe in a different video. What I want to do is half the spinach again. I want to cut up some sauteed mushrooms and some artichoke hearts. Put that in the filling and then rather than making a um, bechamel balsamella sauce I'm going to make a velouté and a mushroom sauce with more sauteed mushrooms in the sauce and put that over the top. That'll probably be good. So those are some variations you might consider and then be creative. Add some of your own ideas if you want. Here they are, hot from the oven. Beautiful. You could brown those under the broiler if you wanted to. Beautiful. All right, set that aside. So there is my cannelloni. I'm gonna put a little bit more sauce on there. Like that. Let it get a little messy on the plate. I think it looks better. And then I'm going to garden that, garnish that with just a touch of fresh chopped Italian parsley. There it is. There's my cannelloni. Last step is to see how good that tastes. Okay, I'm ready for this because I love cannelloni. And I know this is going to taste good. <laughs> Wow. That is wonderful. The filling has just enough of a bold flavor to taste good in this cannelloni. So, excuse me, I'm going to go enjoy my lunch of spinach and ricotta cannelloni. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit my website mobilehomegourmet.com and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.